Well, hey guys, it's Mike Festiva here. Well, check this out. The nice folks at Harbor Freight sent up the Titanium Plasma 45 for me to look over and see what I think about it. So, um, we're going to get right to the video here. We're not going to mess around with the long, slow, dreaded unboxing. We're going to open up real quick. I'll do a little time lapse of that. And we're going to get to see what the contents is and look over the torch and uh, see what we think. So, stick around and check out the video, guys. Might as well stick with tradition with unboxing here. There we go. So here's all the contents. We'll go over everything and lengths of cords and everything like that. But overall, just initially looking at it, I feel like the build quality fits right along with the Titanium series of build quality. The knob feels really nice on the front and switch feels good. So I'll bring you around back and show you the power switch. So back here, there's a nice little rubber cap on the power switch. Kind of keep uh, grit and grime from getting caught in there. And it also has a little water separator on back. It's definitely key for the electrode longevity because having moisture in your airlines definitely just kills the little tips. So that's kind of nice it has that. And on the box, I think it claims about 21 and a half pounds for the unit. They provide a pretty generous amount of power cord for the 240 plug. It's about seven and a half feet of power cord. And if you're running it on 120 volts, you get another maybe 16 inches to add it to that. So one thing to note is that the leads on here, it's pretty nice that they added this feature. The leads actually unbolt off the front or come off, which is pretty cool for packing it up or hauling around. You don't have wires hanging off the front that could get damaged and moving it around, storing it, things like that. And if you have a problem with one of your leads, you can replace them easier that way. Uh, the ground clamp, they're pretty generous. They gave you 10 feet. It's running the smaller DINs plug on here, the same as the Titanium 200, which is nice. Um, one thing I thought they could have upgraded a little bit is the ground clamp's probably completely adequate, but it doesn't have copper contacts on the tip. It's got copper strand going between here, but you know, it's kind of nice when you see the copper on there that's just metal, but I'm sure it's completely adequate for the 45 amps as things passing through. But uh, again, you can always upgrade a Harbor Freight. They sell like $8 clamps that are pretty damn nice there. So yeah, anyways, we'll move on to the torch here. They gave you 14 feet on this thing, which is pretty generous for any DIY hobbyist around their shop. Uh, it seems to be pretty adequate. It feels like pretty good build quality on the torch. It feels like if you drop it on the floor, which you're going to do around your shop sooner or later, it's going to be able to handle quite a few drops. It's got this little safety. It's probably some safety issue you have to have on them now. It's not bad without gloves, but of course, you're always going to be running this with gloves. So we'll see how it is to get that under there. It's kind of flip it up and pull on the trigger. Um, it's kind of nice with the packaging. A decent durable cover that unthreads on here to protect the pinouts. So if you are packing it around, it doesn't damage them. There's this nice little tip drag cup up here. So you're actually running your torch along. You never touch the actual tip to the metal, which is never good. And it feels pretty durable. It's actually on there pretty, pretty well. It doesn't feel like something that's just going to start falling off on you. And uh, I'll give you a little more close up shots of these and we'll go over a little bit more contents. So counting the cup and electrode that come on the torch, you get three more in the bag. So a total of four cups and four electrodes with this thing. Comes with a little filter wrench and another part of a filter. And that's about it. Of course, you get a little plasma manual. Really basic, just gives you some basic operation. This is interesting. It gives you a little bits of uh, codes and description of codes. Like if you overheat it, it's an F1. It, uh, incorrect uh, input voltage is F2. And a shield cup loose or missing. So if you're having a problem with the torch isn't working right, it looks like it actually has a little bit of smart technology built into it. Insufficient air pressure will give you a warning so you know, okay, well, it's an F4. Got to turn up the air pressure. I doubt you're going to see most of these as long as you follow and set it up properly. But, you know, it gives you little things, uh, electro nozzles stuck together. So it keeps you from trying to get frustrated with it. it just tells a warning. And uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting that they provide that with it, that it's actually has a little bit of smart technology built into it to kind of idiot proof it a little bit better. If someone just gets this and doesn't read the manual and doesn't have that right air pressure, it's going to tell you before you uh, cause any problems with the tip or anything like that. So this is an inverter technology like a lot of the welders and stuff. This plasma torch has that. And it means that you can run on 120 volts or 240. I'll bring you in for the duty cycle so you can see if, what it can run off of a 15 amp circuit, 20 amp circuit, and a 240 circuit. But one thing to point out though is if you're running on 240, it's a 50% duty cycle maxed out at 45 amps. And if you want to run it continuous on a 240 volt circuit, it's 33 amp continuous. So that's pretty slick.
so we're getting to the part of the video you guys are probably most excited about actually seeing this thing cut. One thing I want to note is when I turn this thing on, the fan runs, it's fairly loud, but it sounds like it's cooling it pretty well. It runs for maybe 15 to 25 seconds, and then it goes quiet again. And so I must have a sensor in there when it starts to actually warm up. It only turns the fan on when it's needed, which is kind of slick. So right now it's on, it's quiet. We'll probably hear it kick on when I start cutting. Um, keep in mind we're running on 120 volts. We're running on a 20 amp circuit and that it will max out at 20 amps. If you're running on a 15 amp, 120 volt circuit goes to 16 amps. And of course, 240 volts will go to the full 45. We got some eighth inch metal here and we got some 316th. So we're gonna see how that cuts. Got some gloves and got the helmet turned down to shade five. And uh, yeah, so we'll get cutting here. This video is just to post something to kind of get it up and show you what it comes with and see how it does here. But we're gonna run this thing through the paces and up and coming videos. So, you know, keep in mind, hit like and subscribe and you'll get notified when I do some other uh, videos with this thing. Cause I wanna run it through the paces. The box says it'll come up to five eights, I believe. It sounds a little thick for 45 amps, but maybe we'll do it, we'll see. Um, but me and my buddy have a CNC plasma table and I'm hoping to hook this thing up on there if it works with that and the electronics and um, you know see what we can do with it So it'd be kind of fun to run it through the paces on that if it will adapt to the CNC table Well, let's get cutting Really clean cut on that thing. All right, got some uh, three sixteenths here. That cut pretty nice. So I was looking in the manual and it actually is claiming that this thing will cut on uh, just a 20 amp wall circuit at full 20 amps on 120 volts, a uh, quarter inch. So we'll see, check it out. Did it! Pretty nice cut too. It's actually nice and square. It's actually a pretty good cut. Yeah, look at that. Cut really clean. Pretty happy with that. So just want to mention this real quick. Leave a comment down below if you want to see any other close-ups on it. Have any questions that you want me to try to answer about it or you know you have a specific metal thickness you really want to cut and you want to see how it does, just leave a comment down below and I'll try to include it in the up and coming videos. All right, as you guys just saw, the Titanium 45 works pretty darn good on the first test cuts here. We cut eighth inch, a 3 16th and quarter inch very cleanly. So yeah, it's completely capable on 120 volts to cut quarter inch like they claim in the manual. So we'll see, it says 5 eighths for uh, 240. It's pretty thick metal for 45 amps, but cut the quarter inch just like the manual said. We'll see. Anyways, uh, I built a plasma track a while back with that. I just have been running just a little tiny plasma torch on here. So I'm going to hook this thing up here in the next few days and run some tests with this. It's got a control box, a pulse width controller, and pretty much you put a torch in here and you can control the nice square cuts. It works like a uh, chop saw. Um, you know, you can do 90 degrees, it's got a fence here, you can do up to 45s, and uh, it's got some stops in there, so you get it 90 every time, but 
We'll get this thing busted out next video. I'm gonna have to figure out how to control the plasma torch, not with the trigger switch, but remotely with the toggle switch. So I'm gonna have to figure out the schematics on that, but we should be able to hook it up on here. Gonna have to figure that trigger switch out anyways, if I wanna hook it up on the CNC. But yeah, worked really, really good. I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to taking it to work and cutting a lot of metal there and uh, run it through the paces and see how it does and how it actually holds up on the duty cycle. And uh, yeah, in the next few weeks, we're going to post a few more videos running this thing fairly hard and see how it does. But so far, I'm really happy with it. This little standoff tip is a really slick little setup because you can just rest that right on the metal. It slides really nicely and you're never touching the tip to the metal and causing arcs and all that kind of stuff that's bad for the tip. So. Anyways, like I said earlier in the video, if you guys like the video, hit like and subscribe. If you're interested in seeing some more information on this thing and some more videos with it cutting, and I have a, she's got a bunch of videos on my YouTube page from the Pro Tig 200, Omni Pro uh, 220, and the Titanium 200. I've been a big fan of all those welders. And uh, yeah, so hit like and subscribe, guys. Until next time, take care. Bye.